Thank you. There is probably about eight hours of talk I could give you along with that presentation she just gave of actual examples that have occurred in our country, our lands. Um, our people had it really tough. you got to realize, like I mentioned earlier, the people on the reservation had no water, no sewer, no plumbing, no electricity, no telephone, no TV, no refrigeration. In other words, life was tough. You lived in a uh, one uh, earth-filled earth home, then you went to a stacked cedar bark home, then you went to a miner's shack that was basically a square box. And that's what you lived in. That's what my grandparents had. Okay. In, in the very early or mid, late 40s, 1940s, my grandparents went downtown to the post office. Now, it's their only form of communication, so they had to go. They went to the post office to find out uh, what the news was, find out what was sent to them, uh, and stuff like that. On their way back, they stopped off at a grocery store. This is right downtown Nevada City. They picked up a few groceries, had it in a bag. Grandpa was carrying it. As they con uh, continued to walk up through the center part of Grass Valley, the chief of police of Nevada City, the highest law enforcement officer in the community, walked up behind my grandfather and beat him over the head with a billy club. Knocked him to the ground, bloodied his head. Grandma's sitting there trying to uh, put, put cloth over it so it, it st helped stop bleed the bleeding. The groceries went into the gutter and all the way down the streets and stuff. That was a typical experience for my grandparents and every other family that lived in this area if you were a Native American. The highest law enforcement officer did this. There was nobody that could challenge him and most certainly it was not my grandparents. They went home he finally got healed, but the point is, is that was common in the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, okay? The next thing that I can actually po point to directly according to what happened here is that I was born on the reservation. I'm probably the very last Indian who was actually born there and lived there for a short period of time. After that, the term reservation was terminated. No other Indians were born on the reservation. In 1949, I was born. In 1951, the federal government came into our reservation to my grandparents and took away his three daughters and one grandson, and that was me. We were sent into foster care, and in a short time, my mother ended up in Sacramento. My two aunts ended up in the Bay Areas, separated. And I lived, ended up in Hills Flat, Grass Valley. I was raised by an Italian lady, by Nana Orzali. I knew every Italian in this area and I drank all their wine along with it. Because as a child, you could get a sip of wine. But I did not know anything about my personal heritage, my personal customs or anything about my, my background. What I did know that in first grade, they found out I was an Indian and they made me get up in front of class and do a dance. That embarrassed me so much that after that point, I never told anyone I was an Indian again, not until I became an adult. So these things are the things that's happened to our people and is still happening today. You feel it, and gets pretty tough. So, my grandparents, you got to realize that they had no future. They had nothing. Everything they owned was taken away, was everything. They had nothing. They had no dreams. They had nothing to wish for was a good house or a good income or a great job nothing they had nothing 